Jeff Beers with the Yoda Guy here. Um, just want to give you a little update on a project that I'm working on. I have here a 2002 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road, the factory rear e-locker. Um, one thing about it is it has an automatic transmission, the 3.4 liter V6 5EZ FE. Um, recently, um, oh, it supercharged as well, just a factory TRD, no, no extra pulley kit or anything like that running factory boost, um, but he recently has ran into an issue where his transmission has failed. Basically had internal failures and the, the automatic transmission is gonna either require A, an automatic transmission rebuild, or number two, a transmission swap. Now this guy didn't wanna go cheap on parts, so he wanted to put in a full reman automatic transmission, so we priced one out. Um, it's pretty expensive for one. It's about $4,000 to get a um, fully rebuilt brand new Toyota automatic transmission. So we decided to try a different route and that was to do a manual transmission swap. So convert this automatic um, 4x4 2002 Toyota Tacoma to a manual transmission. Now this was available from the factory from this truck. So luckily this truck is pretty much ready to go for it. Um, so we acquired a R150F transmission, five-speed manual, out of another Toyota Tacoma. Um, got it with the T-case as well. Um, we got the bell housing over there. Needed the rear trans mount, because the rear trans mount is different between the automatic and the manual transmission, so we have different trans mounts. Uh, we got the clutch pedal bracket out of the donor vehicle. We also have a few clutch lines, this hard stainless steel hard lines. Uh, we got the shift forks, all that stuff's here. Um, we're getting the center console piece. I have the manual transmission engine harness. You're gonna have to swap over the engine harness if you want the ECU to be compatible with it. And you have to swap over the ECU. This has an automatic transmission ECU into it. So we're putting in an 01 Tacoma a manual transmission ECU. So that way the engine harness will adapt to it and we won't get any check engine lights because there are sensors built into the main engine harness that go into the automatic transmission. And if you don't swap harnesses, you'll have permanent check engine light codes that you cannot wipe. So and we need this truck to pass emissions. Now there's one thing that we ran into. Um, basically the VIN number on used engine ECUs through Toyota, they basically have, every time you put in a, an ECU, there's a VIN number that has to be programmed into that ECU. Now, you can't undo that VIN number from any way that I know unless you go to a computer professional, somebody that can rebuild ECUs, basically, and they can wipe the memory clean and take that off, but, you know, it's uh, several hundred dollars to be able to do that. So, um, we're going to take in a manual transmission ECU. We're not going to wipe the, the VIN number. We're basically just going to try to get Toyota to do it for us, and I already spoke with the Utah Board of Health or the Health Department. Um, and they basically said attempt to do that and then if it doesn't work, they'll be able to give me a, um, an override for emissions basically saying that the VIN mismatch code that's gonna be stored in the ECU won't deter this from being able to pass emissions as long as I maintain all the emission control devices, don't get rid of the cats, you know, don't get rid of any of the, the charcoal canister systems and all that EVAP, whatever. So all that stuff's gonna be maintained. So, um, and we're not just doing a straight stock transmission swap here we decided to do um, a few bit of performance parts so i got some orders from uh, lce engineering um they're actually a pretty well known toyota pickup uh, or forerunner older stuff 22 re they don't have so much as new stuff for new toyotas but older older toyotas man they got everything you need so just gonna run through you with all the the stuff that i have kind of gone through so far so what we wanted to do was, we got this order from LCE Engineering. We got our dual comp clutch kit for the 5EZ FE. Um, that clutch kit is basically the biggest or most powerful clutch kit you can get without, or without sacrificing streetable capabilities. And this is going based off of what LCE Engineering kind of has recommended off their website. So the one that we got is the dual comp kit. Um, this one has dual, the way it's called dual comp is because the pressure plate or the clutch disc, see it's metallic on one side, the other side is a friction material um, that this basically is going to have the same grabbing type of, type of capabilities as like a high horsepower clutch kit, but also since the other side is made out of a different uh, viscous material, 
you should be able to be able to let out the clutch without you know the, the thing just dropping on you and doing burnouts every time you try to let out the clutch because without going full race spec this is about as close as you can get so we're going to put this kit in and see how well this drives um comes in with a new pressure plate more pressure on the pressure plate um optimal friction uh clutch disc new out throw out bearing new pilot bearing clutch alignment tool we also got with it some oem um flywheel bolts because we're gonna have to swap over because this is an automatic we're gonna have to get rid of the flex plate and put in a um a flywheel so we didn't want to just go with any normal flywheel so we decided to do a little bit more aggressive setup and that was going with the 30 pound lce engineering high mass flywheel now going so this is about i think it's about 10 pounds heavier than an oem flywheel you're probably wondering why would you go heavier that's not going to make it go faster it's going to slow the truck down to the worst fuel economy all these other things well number one this truck is supercharged so fuel economy isn't going to be good no matter what you do number two we're not really losing any horsepower we're just increasing rotational mass now granted it is it takes longer to accelerate this rotational mass but getting down to the brass tacks it's not that much now one thing that we wanted to do is kind of build this truck for off-roading we want to be able to go out and go wheeling and go uh, climb up hill climbs and stuff like that now the thing is with high mass flywheels the great thing about them is is that when you start letting out that clutch pedal to start engaging the the clutch disc and stuff the engine rpms isn't want isn't going to want to drop down as much so you're going to have to do less of you know, trying to feather the throttle and feather in the clutch to get the, keep the engine from stalling. Now, if you're out on a hill climb and trying to go up a steep hill, it's great because on this stuff, if you're on four low and stuff, you can just drop out that clutch and just the truck is moving or the tires are turning. I don't know if you're moving, but your tires will be turning. That's for sure. So the high mass flywheel helps keep that momentum going. And basically, once you get up to speed, that flywheel wants to stay at speed. So... Granted, it maybe lose a tenth of a second on a quarter mile time or something like that, you know, maybe more, I don't know. But we're not going for street racer here. We're not trying to do quarter mile times. That's not, that's not the plan. The plan is to make this thing beefy, to make it kind of like build it up so this thing can handle some power, be able to do burnouts if you want, you know. Um, so we're gonna be doing that. Um, so we got the flywheel. We got new pressure plates from LCE Engineering. We also got um, we need to do a new master cylinder. So we got a new clutch master cylinder from LC Engineering. ASIN is the brand that it was, came with, is, which if you know anything about Suedas, ASIN pretty much makes a whole lot of engine and perform, or engine parts for it and stuff, transmission parts. So we got a new ASIN master cylinder, which should go with our clutch pedal pretty well. The other thing that we got going on is a new slave cylinder. We got a new slave cylinder for, for that from LC Engineering. Um, it is, I don't know what brand it says, World Break Resources. Not an ASIN part, but you know, seems pretty good, seems pretty legit. I think that should be all right. Um, what else did we get? Um, we got, oh, a short throw shifter kit. So we got this from LCE Engineering as well. Um, gotta make sure the bolt pattern fits. I got my transmission back there. But this will be a short throw shifter kit. So basically it takes that long handled, you know, shifter instead of just making big dramatic movements it reduces it's down to you're just basically just making little cocks here and there not really a huge performance game but you know short throw shifter kits work they're great it's all about preference on those things you don't really need it but it's there um what else did we get oh lce engineering threw in this uh book and they had some stickers in there in my order number list and i opened it up and they had all the stickers placed in here almost like a uh, little binder or a little bookkeeper. Um, right onto all the torque specs page. So it has all the torque specs that I need. That's awesome. And I got all these stickers. Like, I'm digging this LC engineering kit. They they definitely do their, their job well. Um, so we got all that stuff to adapt this transmission to this automatic. So we got everything. We got ECUs on its way. I got the engine harness back there. We're also doing a new Tim Ken carrier bearing. Um, what else are we doing? Oh, we're doing new oxygen sensor. That's just some a check engine like thing going on. Doing Denso oxygen sensor. So if you don't know, if you ever put an oxygen sensor in a Toyota, always use Denso. Trust me, it, that's the way to go. Only way to go, unless you're going performance. 
you know, then you might be looking at like an innovative, like Bosch universal AFR sensor or whatever, but we're not talking about that. So now we have this here used transmission. This transmission right here is used. I think we have over a hundred thousand miles on it. At this point, it seems good. Um, but one thing about it is everything's turning in there. I got to drain out the oil, check for metal debris or whatever, but we wanted to do a, like what I was saying before, like a full brand new kind of assembly going. This guy didn't want to put in uh, just run of the mill transmission. So I contacted Cobra Transmissions and they sell a full rebuild kit for this. Um, we're basically going to be putting in all new synchronizers for first through fifth and reverse gears. We're going to be putting in all new bearings, all new seals, and inspecting out all the internals elsewhere for damages like on the shift forks, the, uh, the shift sleeves, the synchronizers. Well, we're putting in new synchronizers, but there's going to be detents and stuff in there. So we're just basically going to go through this transmission and make sure everything is perfect and it's going to be brand new. So when we're all done here... We're going to be less than our $4,000 budget just to purchase an automatic transmission. And we're going to have a completely rebuilt manual transmission, all brand new parts and turnals. We're going to have a performance clutch kit. We're going to have a performance flywheel. We got brand new clutch systems um, with master cylinder, slave cylinders, all that jazz, and put in some new drivetrain parts. And yeah, then this thing should be, uh, you know, smoking some tires. Other things we're doing on here too. Um, we're going with a low range off-road, uh, diff lock switch. So this one has the, um, you know, the electronic factory diff lock switch on that. And, uh, you know, the computer makes it work basically has, has to ask a request for that system to work. And if you're not in four low or four high or whatever, and everything's not met to its parameters, it won't allow the diff lock to work. So we want this guy to be able to do his diff lock whenever he wants. Now there is the gray wire mod. I'm aware of the gray wire mod which is cool and all, but you know, I like the, the switch assembly because it's simple because you're getting rid of the ECU and computers and all this other wires. And we're just going to a straight up harness that is just power wire to the battery, to the switch, to the dash that's fused and everything. And then it goes straight back to the diff and sends power to the diff to actuate the e-locker whenever you want. So there's no computers. It's way simpler. If there's any electronics problems or whatever, you can easily fix the, the switch assembly and it's just a really nice kit that they sell. There's a few other companies that sell the kit. They're all pretty much the same thing. You can get different switch assemblies or whatever, but you know. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna get going here on this uh, transmission swap and get this uh, manual transmission bolted up to this automatic O2 Tacoma. So um, hopefully I'll have some more updates for you guys in the future and let you know how things are going. All right, see you later, bye.